Welcome back to chapter two. This section we are going to look at the point slope form of a line. In section one, we looked at the slope intercept form of a line. They both have some good uses, and I'm going to hopefully be able to show you where each of them is uh, is used a bit easier than the other, and how they're also very, very similar to each other. So our first, or the first deal, our learning target, I can write and graph linear equations in point-slope form. Last time we had slope-intercept form. So what is point-slope form? So if you remember slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form is just the y equals mx plus b. Um, every line needs a starting point. In this case, it was that y-intercept and a direction, which is the slope. Point slope form is looks like this. It's y minus y1 equals m times x minus m1. m is still the slope. That is not changing. Um, x and y are still the variables. They're the points on the line. And now instead of B, the y-intercept, which is a very, very specific starting point, we have a more general starting point, which is x1, y1. It's a point on the line. And it does not matter which point it is. Any point on the line will work. Whereas if x was 0 and y was b, that's what we'd get for the y, the slope intercept form. Um, and so we're gonna see how this is very similar. I mean, you can hopefully already see some similarities. They both have an M for slope. They both have an X and a Y. It's just in this one, we have the X1 and Y1 as opposed to just that B. So where, where does this slope point slope form even come from? Like the slope intercept form y equals mx plus b, you've probably heard that even before I told you. Um, and it has a slope, it has a y intercept. It's, it's really kind of convenient. What about this one? This one actually comes directly from the slope itself. The slope equation, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, y minus y over x minus x. If you look, it actually looks pretty similar to this. In fact, if we took this denominator and multiplied it over, we would get m times x2 minus x1 equals y2 minus y1. And so, but x2 and x1 are specific points. Let's say we want any point. Well, we still need a starting point, but we can change one of these points into our variables x and y. So we have x and y. So we get m times x minus x1 equals y minus y1, which is the point slope form. So it comes directly from the equation of a slope. Um, and so it has its uses and we're going to see how we're going to use it in just a second. Um, but first, one of the big mistakes people make um, is taking stuff out of the point slope form. So if we have an equation, let's say we have y minus two equals three times x plus one. So we want the slope. The slope, that one's usually pretty easy. It's just that number that's being multiplied there. So the slope equals three. But then what point does it go through? We look at, for the x part, we have x plus one. All right, and so people say, oh, it goes through the point, like it's one. No, the, the equation is x minus this. So this x plus one could be written as x minus negative one. And so that means that's a negative one. And then y, we have y minus two. Well, it's y minus that y point. 
so it's 2. So it goes to the point negative 1, 2. We do need to make sure that we switch the signs on what it shows in the equation because the formula has that negative in it. And so that's one of those places that people tend to uh, slip up a bit, um, is just finding that point. And we'll see that a couple more times uh, in today's lesson. I just wanted to point it out very, very directly and definitively. And so writing in point slope form. If we have two points, that's one way. That's actually, this is the hardest way of doing it. Sometimes they're gonna give you a slope and a point, and then you just plug it into the equation. We have two points. The very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the slope. So our slope is gonna be y minus y, so let's go nine minus three over x minus x, four minus two. Nine minus three is um, six over four minus two is two. So that gives us a slope of three. Now we're going to take that and we're going to pick either of our two points to go into point slope form. So point slope form is going to be over here. Let's use the point two comma three. So we're going to go here. I'll underline it in red because I'm going to do the other one as well. So we're going to go y minus three equals our slope, which is three times x minus the x point, 2. That's the equation in point slope form. Now, the other one, if we use the other point, let's do this one in blue, we have y minus 9 equals the slope, which is the same, times x minus 4. So, that's also the equation in point slope form. Now, the problem with this is that those two equations are for the same line. They describe the exact same line. It's just we have a different starting point for each of them, but it'll still go through the other point and going in the same direction. And so this is where slope intercept is a little bit better. Now, a lot of the questions there are just going to have you write your equation in point slope form. We're done. Oh, and if it gives you a slope and a point, you don't even have to find the slope. You just use the slope they give you, plug in the point. Um, so if it has you write it there, you're done. But a lot of times we like to put our final answer in slope intercept form because there is exactly one way to write every line in slope intercept form. And so the process of getting there is always going to be the same. We're going to distribute the slope. So we'll have y minus 3 equals 3x minus 6, because 3 times 2. And then we're going to solve for y. So we're going to add that number over there. So we have y equals 3x, negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. We do the same thing over here. We distribute. So we get y minus 9 equals 3x minus 12. Add the 9, add the 9. So y equals 3x minus 3, because negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. So this was that slope-intercept form that we were finding last time. And so that's a lot of times where we like our final answer. So that will be coming, but, and that's one of the reasons why we do this, as opposed to plugging in the thing and solving for B and then plugging B back into the equation, it's two steps. I know in, when I was in high school, I always just found B and plugged it in and didn't realize that this was easier until I got to college. And I thought, wow, I wish someone would have told me that this was easier. Um, so I'm telling you that it's actually easier to do it this way. Um, so, uh, but, so that's what's going to be coming. Mostly today, it's going to have you write it in point-slope form. So the answer would be one of these guys 
up here. Um, and being that the system is really picky and very unforgiving a lot of times, um, it does need to be in the correct form that it's asking you for. Um, but the same is true with the state test. If the state test asks for point slope form and you put it in slope intercept form, you didn't follow the directions, and so you do get it wrong. Um, so it is important to follow directions. So let's see this again really quick. We have negative 1, 5, and 2, 6. So first step, we're going to find the slope. Slope is y minus y. Let's go 6 minus 5 over x minus x. 2 minus negative 1 will be plus 1. 6 minus 5 is 1 over 2 plus 1 is 3. So we have a slope of one third. Now, if we're going to write this in point slope form, we just pick a point. I will, I'll do both of them because why not? So we'll do this first point over here. We have y minus five equals our slope one third times x minus negative one gives us a plus one. There we go. And the other one, if we would have used that point, we'd have y minus 6 equals 1 third x minus 2. So just plugging in the slope and that point into the equation. Um, if we wanted to take it to slope intercept form, we would distribute the 1 third. I'll do it for one of them. y minus 5 equals 1 third x plus 1 third. Add the 5 add the 5, y equals 1 third x plus 5 and 1 third, or 16 thirds if you, if you want to go that way. Um, and you'd get the same thing if you tried it on the other one. So writing in point slope form, we still have to find the slope. We still need a point that we're starting from. We just plug it into the equation a little bit differently. So now it's your turn to try one. All right, so try this one. Uh, 1 comma 4 and negative 3 comma 12. Find the slope, write it in point slope form using one of the two points, and then if you're feeling brave, see if you can write it in slope intercept form. All right, so go ahead and pause, then start it up again when you're ready. How do you think you did? Did you get it? Well, let's try and find the slope first. So our slope is going to be y minus y, so let's go 12 minus 4 over x minus x, negative 3 minus 1. So the slope, 12 minus 4 is 8, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, 8 over negative 4 is negative 2, so we have a slope of negative 2. Choose one of the points. I'll do both just so that it doesn't matter which one you picked. We'll be able to see if you got it right. So if we use the first one, That'll be y minus 4 equals negative 2 times x minus 1. If we use the second one, that would be y minus 12 equals negative 2 times x minus negative 3, which is plus 3. How'd you do? Did you get it? If not, did you see where it went wrong? Did you switch the x's and the y's? That's a common mistake, again, because the order is backwards from the order that the ordered pair is in. Uh, if you switched it to slope intercept form, let's see what happens. I'm going to use the one with the smaller numbers. So I'm going to use this one. Distribute the negative 2. So we have y minus 4 equals negative 2x plus 2. Add the 4. Add the 4. y equals negative 2x plus 6. And you would get the uh, same thing if you use the other point. That's why slope intercept is nice. So how'd you do? Did you, again, did you do it right? If not, do you see where you went wrong? Um, so um, graphing. Graphing in point slope form. Graphing in point slope form is really no different than graphing in slope intercept form. Because in order to graph, we need a direction and we need a starting point. In slope-intercept form, the starting point is the y-intercept. In point-slope form, it's just whatever point we're given. So if we have this equation, we have our slope is 3 fourths, and then our starting point, we have x plus 1, which means, we switch the sign on that, 
negative 1, and then y minus 2. So we have 2. So we start at the point negative 1, 2, and then our slope is 3 fourths. Yeah, look at this. I, I switch it so I have one box per thing. So we have negative 1, 2. There's our starting point. And then from there, we're going to go up 3 over 4. And put our next point. Then we could go up 3 over 4 again. Put another point. We could go down 3, backwards 4, and put a point. And then just connect the dots, straight line, arrows, and there we go. So we just, I mean, it was the same. We started with a point. The point just wasn't on that y-axis. It was just anywhere in the graph. We don't need a point on the y-axis. So sometimes, like here, that point would have been two and three quarters. That's not an easy point to graph. So having a point that's not that makes it easier. All right, so um, try one yourself. We have y plus 3 equals negative 1 half times x minus 1. Don't forget to switch those signs on your point. And uh, good luck. Pause it. Start it up again when you're graphed. Do you think you got it? All right, well, let's check. We have our slope is negative 1 half. And then our point, x, we have x minus 1, so that's positive 1. y plus 3, so that's negative 3. Did you remember to get those signs right? If not, switch them, pause it, see if you can get it right really quick. All right, if you did, let's graph. So 1, negative 3, it's going to be there. Their slope is negative 1 half, so we're going to go down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. We could have gone up 1 backwards 2. Up 1 backwards 2. Notice it all falls in the same line. The more points you graph, the easier it is to get a straight line. And there we go. So that's point slope form. A lot of the skills that we're using are the same as slope intercept form. We're just looking at a slightly different um, look at what that line looks like. So um, hopefully this will help strengthen what we were doing and add the new thing and they'll help work together. Um, and I will see you in class. But until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.